All right, guys. Welcome back. Gonna start doing my break in. Um, I'm gonna call this step. Not even step one. We're gonna call this step point five. Okay. So this method here is a heat cycle method. What I got here is my car and my heater. Now if you saw my last video, you probably saw that I spent a little bit of time cleaning the car up and getting the motor in. Um, I set my EPAs and all that all that other boring stuff uh, before we do the break-in. So tonight, it's already dark out, so I'm not going to fire this thing up. So some people might not recommend this method. Some might say it's a waste of time. And in my opinion... It may be a waste of time, but in my opinion, it's the if you have time to do it, I would do it. It's not hurting anything. So basically, what you're going to be doing is heat heat cycling the entire engine without actually firing it up. I've got my competition heat engine heater here. You can find this online just about anywhere. Uh, there's a number of companies that make them. This is probably the biggest biggest brand one that you can get. Um, without saying too much about these, they're about a hundred bucks. They're worth every penny. If you want to uh, get more longevity out of your engine, you should have one of these. Especially with the newer engine, you're gonna after it's broken in, you're gonna want to preheat your engine and make sure that you're not firing it cold. So uh, there are two options to these. You can get a uh, 12 volt which is like what I, our uh, 120 volt, which is like I have here, where you can plug it in. They also do have a 12 volt one, which you can plug into your bump box to a three cell lipo. Um, I have one of those, but realistically, they're kind of a pain in the neck. They just kind of drain your, your lipo inside your bump box awfully quick. So I prefer to use this. Um, even when I'm trackside, I'll probably use this more than the other one. So the other one is just kind of if you're in a pinch and you don't have power at the track or something. Um, some guys like them more. I, I just it's just me. I'm not a big fan of them. They they kill my batteries too fast in my bump box, and my bump box is something that I, I'm lazy about. I don't want to always charge the battery in it. I just want to grab my stuff and go. So um, if you know me personally, you know how I am. I hate charging batteries. So. Um, so the first step to this process is going to be uh, make sure you got your motor in and everything's all good and pop this guy right on make sure it's nice and tight you want this wire should be over your wing okay because of the heating element the way it wraps you want this wire to be pointed to the back of the car so get this on there nice and snug It's going to start heating my motor. Now, like I said, some people are going to say that this method is pointless or not worth the time, and they may be right. I'm not a scientist when it comes to nitro engines. But what I do know is that I've broken in the last three engines with three different methods, and the last method was the most successful, I would say, out of retaining pinch or mechanical pinch in the engine as long as I possibly could. That was the whole idea, was to break in the last three engines three different ways to see which one held its, uh, you know, held its own as long as possible. So this is the method that I'll be using from now on. Doing this, what we're going to be doing here is we're going to heat it up. I can feel it's already getting warm. We're going to bring this up to full temperature. Now this heater only comes up to 180 degrees. It'd be nice to see if I'm see it come up to uh, 200 degrees but uh, 180 will be fine so we're gonna make sure that our engine is at bottom dead center okay we don't want our piston to be stuck in there we don't want to expand the metals and then when we let it cool off let it shrink back around the piston so make sure your piston is at bottom dead center basically this this step is if you have the time 
and you, you want to go through with doing this step, you can go for it and do it. I'm recommending it. If you got a nice fancy motor, I would recommend it. It's not hurting anything. Basically what I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring it up to temperature and I'm going to let it cool off. And I'm going to do that five consecutive times. Okay, I'm going to bring it up to as hot as this heater is going to take it. And when it's done, I'm going to let it cool off and let the engine cool off 100%. And then I'll come back to it and fire it back up and heat it up again. And I'm going to do that five times. I would recommend that if you're going to do this, if, if you're going to make it worth your time doing it, I would do it at least three times. If you have time like I do where it's 10 o'clock at night and your neighbors wouldn't be happy if you were breaking an engine, breaking in an engine at 10 o'clock at night, then do it five times. When I did the last engine, I did it five times, okay? Like I said in my previous videos, this engine, I did it, I'm doing the same break-in method that I did on this engine. This engine has 10 gallons on it. I haven't replaced any bearings. I haven't had to replace any O-rings in the carburetor. I haven't had any issues with this engine whatsoever. Okay, and it still runs awesome. I will still be keeping this motor as a backup motor. I was actually trying to get this motor to blow up and I couldn't get it to blow up. So, like I said, this is going to be step point five of our break-in series here. And uh, heat it up, cool it down, 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 heat it up, cool it down. Tomorrow, we'll come outside and uh, we'll fire it up and we'll go from there. Alright guys, uh, hope this tip helps you and... Uh, you want to leave some feedback I don't know if any of you guys watching my channel have tried this method if you guys have found anything out about it I like I said I it's not gonna hurt your engine at all I don't know if it makes it better or not but I guess if I want this engine to be as great as that engine was I'm gonna repeat whatever I did with the last engine alright so uh, hopefully that all makes sense Again, this is going to be step point five, and tomorrow we'll get on to step one and uh, breaking in the uh, new Reds R5T version 3.0. So I hope you guys come back for more, and if you guys like, leave a comment, like the video, subscribe if you like, share the video if it helps you or helps a friend, and um, happy racing. See you guys.